What's going on, you guys? Down here at the car. Tune in the bit one. Uh, this is an audio processor, digital signal processor to be exact. Um, but yeah, just showing you, just want to show you why you'd maybe you'd want to do this. So, if you're running an active system like I am, then it's a must or you'll ruin your speakers. But, you know, that aside. Let's say you're running the passive crossover networks. So that basically means that this tweeter, and you, know, you can't see down there, but the six and a half in the door are tied together, meaning you can't adjust the tweeter's crossover. You can with like, there's like a little bit of adjustability, but in my, I find that, um, because cars are so different than like a house environment you know, basically this windshield is like a huge reflector the windshield and the windows and all that stuff and the fact that that's where the tweeter is <clears throat> not only are they point on access meaning pointing at you but they're also surrounded by fucking uh, reflective ass shit so basically what that translates to is um, your highs being a lot more prominent than the woofers in the doors and the sub you know not being able to keep up with it it's so basically you turn turn it up to hear how loud you want this shit but then the highs are so piercing um, that it's not enjoyable anymore. So, with active, and we're here at the bit one, uh, what should we call it? Application or whatever. Uh, what this lets you do is adjust shit separately. So, on channel one, I have my left tweeter. Channel two, right tweeter. Channel three, left door speaker. Channel 4 left right door speaker. So, as you can see, I have my tweeters turned way the fuck down because they're so bright. And that's it's actually a little bit too much, but you know, what I'm gonna do is just kind of bring them up a little bit. But basically, you can sit here listening to the music and like really dial in the system. Um, another thing is, when you use a, like the passive crossover network, you're basically stuck with whatever the manufacturer decided is your crossover point. And, um, you know, they're generally pretty good at picking that, but not, not all environments and the way you have your shit mounted is going to be conducive to that kind of setup. Or whatever you know what I'm saying so for example um, the passive crossover networks on these tweeters are high passed at 3200 Hertz and as you can see I raised it to 4,000 and then what's cool is you can change the slope from 12 to 24 or 36 or 48 you're not gonna have nearly that much adjustability just from the head unit itself um, Another thing is time alignment. So this head unit has time alignment, right? But it's a fixed time alignment. Basically, meaning it doesn't have a bandpass filter in it. So you can't run active just off the head unit. And why would you want to anyway? I mean, let's disregard that um, the point is there's time alignment on here but basically the the distance of the tweeter and the woofer are fixed so however much or farther you push it out the tweeter is going to come with the woofer with this we can adjust 
the time alignment of the tweeter and the woofer independently. So as you can see the tweeter is a little bit closer to me. So we have it delayed a little bit more than the uh, the woofers. And yeah, you can kind of like link it together. You can also um since I have my tweeters running on the front channels of my four channel amplifier and um, the woofers as the rears um, they have like independent gains so not only can I adjust it here but you can also set it up there you know to like uh, limit the power that it gives your tweeters and stuff like that so yeah um, just uh, there's plenty more you can do but basically if you want your car to sound good it's kind of uh, necessary to have a sound processor